Today, uh, I would like for us to jump to John chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. Let me just say this. John chapter 11, the whole chapter is about Lazarus. His sickness, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. But obviously, the whole chapter is too long. So I will really have to cut it down. But still, even if I have to cut it down, we will be covering 16 verses. But I'll be focusing a lot about describing who the characters are, the main characters. Obviously, it's Lazarus, the sisters, Mary and Martha, and then the disciples. So those are the main characters here in chapters 11, 1 through 16. So let me read verse 1 to 16. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with his hair, with her hair. So the sisters went, sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you. And yet you are going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. <laughs> Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. So uh, I love this portion of scriptures because guess what? We are going to talk about something that all of us are going to experience unless the Lord returns. And what is that? Death. Death. So, first, like I told you, I'd like to just give the characters. Who are they? First one, verse one. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. We don't know anything about Lazarus except that he was the sister of Mary and Martha and that he is a sick man. Brother. Oh, sorry, brother. There is nowhere in the gospel and any other part of scriptures the story of Lazarus except in the book of John. So all we know is that he was a man named Lazarus. In another translation, there was a certain man named Lazarus. Yeah. So in other words, we really don't know much about him except for that the details that is being said here in the book of John. We also know that he was sick. We don't know what kind of sickness he had. We don't know what virus he had, whether it be COVID, whether it be something that will really kill him because later on he's going to die. Okay? So we don't know. We just know it's terminal illness. Then we also find out that he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Now, I want to call this Bethany 1. Because there are two Bethanies in the New Testament. Where Jesus was at the present moment is also in Bethany at the other side of the Jordan. How do we know that? Because in the, the previous verses in chapter 10, he went to the other side of the Jordan where John the Baptist was baptizing. Remember that? So I'll bring you back to John chapter 1 verse 28. And we will find out that verse, verse 120, chapter 1 verse 28, this all happened at Bethany. Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. So if we go back now to John chapter 11, 
this another Bethany. Okay, so Bethany 1 and other side, I'll call it Bethany 2. I need to say that because I'll be referring Bethany a lot of times and then we might get confused which Bethany is it. Now, he was from Bethany 1, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So we know that Lazarus has two sisters. Now, the names Mary in particular, actually Mary and Martha and Lazarus are common names, very common names. But Mary in particular is very common. That is why later on at the crucifixion of Jesus, we will see several Marys. And if you don't know which Mary is being spoken about, you'll get confused. Is it Mary the mother of Jesus? Is it Mary Magdalene? Is it Mary the sister of uh, Lazarus? They're all present, all the Marys. That's why John explains in verse 2, who is this particular Mary? This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same Mary who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So later on, in chapter 12, we will have the details of the life story of Mary. Verse 3. So the two sisters, Mary and Martha, sent word to Jesus. Okay? Now, obviously, there was no text message back then. Okay? They had to send a messenger. And from Bethany 1 to Bethany 2 is a day's walk. One day's walk. Actually, it's two miles away. But because of the terrain, it takes a whole day walk. So in other words, when sisters Mary and Martha sent the messenger, Jesus will receive the message tomorrow. Okay? And what's the message? It's a short message. Lord, the one you love is sick. Very simple message. But I would like to, 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 to break this down. First one is that the two sisters did not say, Lord, the one who loves you is sick. Rather, Lord, the one you love is sick. The word love here is not the word love that we are very familiar with. It's not agape. Okay? It is phileo. And the word phileo is the love that you have towards a brother. So, in other words, what Mary and Martha is saying here, Lord, your brother that you love so much is sick, which tells us about the humanity of Christ. Even though he is God, he grew up as a natural, normal person who had people whom he is close to and people who are not so close. And Lazarus is one of those close people somewhere down the line. We don't know if they were childhood friends. We don't know, except that we know that Jesus loved Lazarus. So we also find out that Mary and Martha called Jesus Lord, which tells us, by the way, that Mary and Martha are both believers, which will be explicitly said at the end of the chapter, that both Mary, Martha, and Lazarus is a family who are believers. So they said, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, I'll also speculate at this point. Jesus has been staying in the other side of the Jordan, where he was successful in his ministry. Remember? Because John the Baptist preached repentance there and many believed at the end of chapter 10. Many believed. So they were experiencing growth. They were experiencing acceptance. Finally, after three years of disapproval in Jerusalem in particular, where he was being about to be stoned to death at least five times. So finally, they are experiencing some success. And the disciples were experiencing, you know, a joy and love of the people. But Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were living in Judea, where the people hated Jesus. So they finally gave a message only at the point where Lazarus was about to die. Why? Because they knew, they knew that, may, uh, that Jesus and the disciples ran away from the potential stoning in Jerusalem. But since Lazarus is about to die, they said, we better call him. Lord, the one you love is sick. And by the way, there is no demand here that Lord, come back and heal him. Because we have faith. Because we, no, they, just simply said, they simply said, the one you love is sick. Now, starting with verse 4, is where the interesting part of the story happens. When he heard this, 
Jesus. When Jesus heard this, what did he hear? That Lazarus, whom he loved, is sick. The first comment he said, well, the one who said that was the messenger, right? And the disciples were present. So he said to the messenger and to his disciples, this sickness will not end in death. Now question, did Lazarus die? Yes. yes. He died. Yes. Is Jesus lying? No. No. Why? He said, this will not end in death. Resurrection. Mm. Because the death of Lazarus is not the end of the story. The end of the story is that Lazarus was resurrected from the dead. So on a side note, oftentimes we are in trouble, we are in difficulties, we are in challenges in life. The thing is, it is not the end of the story. The end of the story of every single believer is revelations where there will be no more tears and no more pains and we are in the presence of God. Meanwhile, here on earth, you are going to have trouble. That's a promise. Okay, so again, that's just a side, side, uh, side lesson on this. So this sickness will not end in death because ultimately later on, we will find out that Lazarus was resurrected. Then he says this. No, he will not die. He will not die. Rather, it is for God's glory. Isn't this interesting? Oftentimes, even for you and I, as evangelical, biblical Christians, we always, almost all the time, when problems come, it's we always blame who? The devil. <laughs> Satan, get away. I drive you out. In Did you know? That, by the way, this is the first time. Just two chapters before. The blind man. Yeah. From birth. Yeah. Right. And the disciples were saying, Lord, who sinned? This man or his parents? What did you say? No. It is for no. God's no. glory. No. Sickness, blindness. COVID, cancers, no matter what, in Christ for God's glory. That is what we do not understand because we think the end of the story is our problem. There is a future resurrection. All the life we are going through right now, this is just the, you know, the, the, the short period of time. In 1 Peter, it says, though we are going to suffer trials of all sorts, it is only for a short period of time. You know how short is that? Lifetime. Lifetime. It is not for the for God. Uh, it, no, it is not going to end in death. Rather, it is for God's glory. And here's, here's the reason. So that God's son may be glorified to it. By the way, I will, uh, you know, for God's glory is the, the fifth sola. Remember from last week? Last week we focused on sola scriptura. Today we're going to focus on Soli Deo Gloria, that everything that goes on in your life and in my life is all for the glory of God, even though it seemingly is a problem, seemingly, you know, we cannot explain or understand, everything is for the glory of God, as we will see in this story. So, it's for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So that Jesus will be better understood according to what is going on with this man. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Now we shift the word from agapeo. Now it becomes agape. Now, Jesus so loved Martha, Ma Mary, and Lazarus. Now, this is a conditional statement. What does it mean? He says, now Jesus loved. He is giving the condition. Because Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Then the next verse. So, okay, let's start there. So, what's the so? Because Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Therefore, so, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he ran towards Lazarus. No. Huh? No. What did he do? He stayed, two more days. Stay he stayed where he was in Bethany too. Yeah. Across the river. Yeah. Two more days. Did you know 
You know, sometimes we want shortcuts for you and I. As soon as problem comes, the moment it arrives, what's the first prayer? Lord, take it away. But what did God say? Two more days. <laughs> and it varies, by the way. At the time of Israel, when they were captured in Babylon, you remember the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach? How many days? How many days? 70 years. Years. <laughs> God permitted them to be in suffering for 70 years. What about the Israelites in Egypt? Huh? For in the desert. In Egypt. 400 years. That means your problem can be solved in your grand, grand, grandchildren. In other words, your problem will remain with you in your whole lifetime. It varies. But you see, every problem has its purpose. The problem for us is we are too short-sighted. How many short-sighted people do we have here that you cannot read it when you don't have your glasses? You know, you can only see it, you know, like one foot away. The moment is two feet away, three feet away. Sino ka ba? Short-sighted. But Jesus intentionally stayed two more days because why? Because he loves Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. I, 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 I want it to sink in. Because oftentimes we think, Lord, if you love me, therefore, take this away. But the only saying, because I love you, I will have it with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's saying, right? Yeah. That's what it's saying. Two more days. Yeah, two two more days. days or, yeah. or 70 more years. <laughs> or or your whole lifetime. Yeah. You can never know. Because the promise of no more tears and no more pain is when we are with the Lord in eternity. Yeah. Yeah. So he stayed where he was two more days because he loved them. Huh? And then he I said to his disciples, here you go. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the, where the core of the story begins. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Now, that seems nothing. No big deal. But we need to know the circumstances. They just left Judea because they were about to be killed in Judea. Remember that? Yes. They were about to be stoned in Judea. Several times. Several times. And then now Jesus is saying, let us go back. You know what the, the disciples were thinking? This messenger who came is a bad news messenger. <laughs> we are happy here in Bethany too. People are receiving the Lord. People are in, we are enjoying their, you know, their pancit and lumpia here. We are being loved here. And now, this messenger, you told our master Jesus to go back to Judea? Look at the response. How do I know that they, they are thinking of that? Because of their response. Their response in verse 8. But Rabbi, ah, before we go further, you know what Rabbi is? Teacher, master. You know, it's very interesting that we are very much like the disciples. We call Jesus so many titles. Jesus, uh, the master, the savior, my Lord, the creator of universe. I want you to do, to do this. We want to dictate to the Lord what, he, what he, he's supposed to do. Because they said, Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jews there in Bethany 1, in Judea, tried to stone you. And yet you are going back. What are they suggesting? They were suggesting, suggesting, don't go back there. So what if Lazarus is sick? Now more so, because Jesus said in the next verse, oh, by the way, let me just say this, talking about being hated or being stoned, it should not surprise the disciples of the Lord, that's you and I, it should not surprise us that if the world hates us. I repeat it should not surprise us if the world hates us. This is what Jesus said, chapter 15, uh, four chapters later on. Okay, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated, that it hated me first. Mm -hmm. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. You know, our, our problem sometimes is that we're not being hated by people because we all want to be loved by people. And no wonder 
we don't really preach the gospel. We preach only the icing of the gospel. We don't want to tell them that they are sinners on their way to hell. We want to, uh, you know, play, uh, play safe. And so we really do not, we're not able to really communicate uh, the gospel. So let, let me continue here. Where am I? Okay. So Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered. Very, very interesting answer. Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they, are, that they stumble, for they have no light. When I first read this, I was just going crazy. What is he talking about? What's about the light and the 12 hours of daylight? What is this? Now, here's now where the context really matters. What is the context? The context is the, the, the disciples were suggesting that they do not go to Judea because in Judea, it is dangerous and that they might be stoned to death. Then just replies, Having the thought okay, that they must be killed in Jerusalem, they must be killed in Judea, he said, well, are there not 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night? After reading some commentary, particularly the one of John MacArthur, which I really love the way he, he, he describes this, that in the end, like the sunlight, you don't have control over it. 12 hours, roughly, there will be sunlight, and then under 12 hours of nighttime. In the context, speaking about death, there's nothing you can do about it. We have 12 hours of life. And then after that, when it sets, you're gone. What's the point of Jesus? The point of Jesus, even though my life is in, in danger in Judea, if it's not my time, it is not my time. So from this point on, I would like to talk about death. Death somehow is... Um, Something that even a lot of Christians are very fearful. They try to avoid death. But let me just say this. How does Jesus view death? And how do the disciples of Jesus uh, uh, view death? How, how did they look at it? I'll, I'll, be, I'll be going through several verses. Number one, in Matthew. Jesus said, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. So you can connect it. This is in the same as the book of John. I have to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. So Jesus knew he was going to suffer. And then he says, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Jesus knew exactly where he was going. Death. And yet he says, I'm going there. Peter took him aside when Jesus said, I'm going to die there. So Peter, the leader of the, of the group, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke. rebuke Jesus. It's the opposite now. It's Peter rebuking Jesus. And what did Peter say? Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. What is, what is this? You'll never die. Yeah. I will never permit that you will, you will be put to death. I will never permit the, the Pharisees and the, the, the Jews in Jerusalem to, to, to stone you, kill you. No way! Look at the response of Jesus. Thank you, Peter, for loving me so much. No. no. Jesus said, yes, turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Isn't it very ironic? Yeah. All of us, oftentimes, most of the time, or all the time, always avoid death. Try to escape death. But there are times that it is the appointed time of God for us to die. Get behind me, Satan. Why? You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Isn't that interesting? Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. 
So you see now the context of carrying the cross? Carrying the cross is willing to die for the Lord. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. If you and I are always trying to hide and shy away from doing the work of the Lord because of the fear of death, then you will not find your life. You will not find meaning in your life. Ecclesiastes, I love this one. There is a time for everything and a time and a season for every activity under the heavens. And one, one of them is a time to be born and a time to die. Now, the thing about the time to be born, I think all of us here have birth certificate, right? They have birth certificate. All of us technically have a heavenly death certificate. It already has its date and time. Hmm. No, matter what you do. no matter what you do. Because there is 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of night. You cannot stop the sun from rising and, and setting down. Another verse. Hebrews. Just as people are destined to die one. You know what they're destined? Planned out. God from the beginning of, of time already had a destination. Elita until 88 years old. Hallelujah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Plus tax. <laughs> okay. I, I even like the translation in uh, in King James. The King James says this. And as it is, what? Appointed. appointed unto man wants to die. So this thing is planned out. Appointed is given. This is what you are supposed, this is what's supposed to happen to you. You see, this is the interesting part. We, we think that we can prolong life. We cannot. That is exactly what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. We go to where it is dangerous in Jerusalem. But if it's not my time, it's not your time, you won't die. Because there are many times in chapters 1 to chapter 10 that he was being stoned to death. But he was able to escape. And then he said, because it is not my time. This is something we have to understand as Christians. God has appointed not only our birth. You are born in this era, in this year 2000 and 1900, because God planned out before the foundation of the world for you to be born that time. And also to die. Actually, the mark of your expiration date is right here. You go check in the mirror later on. Okay, Put your pants down and look at the mirror. There's a, there's a date. <laughs> it's fine. It's yeah. Uh, I had a co worker. Uh -huh. He told us uh, that week that uh, he's going to start biking because uh, to prolong his life. Uh -huh. Yeah. That Saturday, he got run over the Del Dio's highway. Uh -huh. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Now, let me just say this <laughs> statistics are statistics. Okay? One thing we have to understand. Unless the Lord returns, unless the Lord returns, all of us, no exception, are going to die. It could be because of biking. It, 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 it could be anything. Now, this is just statistics. Okay? I just went to research Google. Google, what's the average number of years? Well, the global life expectancy at birth for women is 75 years old. Ma, over time ka na masyado. And 70 years for men. Now, there's good news. For Amer yeah, yeah. And here's the good news. For Americans. Okay, Americans. However, in America, the average life expectancy for women is 81. Over time pa rin kayo, ma. And for men, 77, 77 years. <laughs> I always joke with my mom. I said, Ma, kaya mahaba ang buhay mo kasi matagal mamatay yung masamang damo. <laughs> but you see, this is reality. You cannot escape this. Yeah. You, can, you can live longer than this, praise the Lord for that, but there is an appointed time. You see, sometimes people will say, Oh, so, you know, I'm starting to feel pain and I can't. That's natural. What do you expect? That's what my doctor said. 
That's natural. So remember, we're going to talk about that from the point of view of scriptures because the disciples, Mary, Martha, were all times of with death because later on Mary and Martha would say, Jesus, if you have arrived earlier, Lazarus would have not died. You see, this is the tendency of human being. We always want to somehow prolong this temporary life. Amen. Oftentimes, because we don't have a proper view of eternity. So let's move on. So as believers who are still alive today, the key, the key is to maximize your earthly life for the kingdom of God. So let's go to that. Okay. Let's, I'll quote many other verses. Acts. I love this. If there's anything that can be said about me, I hope when I die, uh, memorial service for Mike. Okay. One of you can say this. Now, when Mike has served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. What's that? He died. <laughs> How do we know that he died? Because he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. Yes. That is totally dead. I mean, such a beautiful commentary of the life of David. Now, did David live a perfect life? No. Of course not. He's a peeping thumb. You know that? Yeah. He's a murderer. Yeah. And yet, in his lifetime, he served God's purpose in his own generation. You and I belong to the same generation. Okay. Yes. So in your lifetime, in your generation, I trust that you are able to serve God's purposes in and through your life. Mm -hmm. Because one day, we're going to have a mem memorial service Goodbye. of one of you. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. We are going to have it. Oh, so ano si ano? Late na naman? Hindi niyo ba narinig? Did you hear? <laughs> she was on way, on way, on her way here, and she got hit by a fill in the blank. Oh, by the way, we think COVID is done. No, okay, na a new virus has come out. Monkeypox. Mm. Yep. Uh, yes. You know, seventy years was predicted by the Bible. No, what that? Seventy years. Seventy years. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 88 time. <laughs> okay, let's move on. This is quite long. Let's move on. Next one. Thessalonians. Now, the church in Thessalonians are Christians. But there is possible that you are a Christian and yet ignorant about that. Here's what Paul said to the church in Thessalonica. Brothers and sisters, in Christ, in the Lord, we do not want you to be uninformed. Or another word, I don't want to be ignorant mm -hmm. about those who sleep in death. What do you mean? By, what, what do you mean ignorant? Well, here you go. Because if you're ignorant, okay, so that here's the purpose: you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Oh. The problem with people, even so-called Christians, when somebody dies, as if that's the end of it. No, it is not the end of it. Later on in chapter 15, Jesus said, if you believe, though you die, you live. Mm -hmm. That has to sink in. Because oftentimes we know it cognitively, but it's not real in our life. That is why when somebody dies, you know, as if we are the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we, as a Christian, believe that Jesus died and rose, rose again. And therefore, and so, we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Amen. Corinthians. Oh, these are beautiful verses. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in this body, we are away from the Lord. You know something like Lord, I want to feel your presence. Really? Then go die. <laughs> I heard this uh, one pastor a long, long time ago. He said, Christians are funny people. They want to be with the Lord, but they don't want to die. But the other is a boy, totally different. As long as I'm in his body, I'm away from the Lord. Then he says, we are confident, I say, 
and wood. Prepare. What's the word prefer? Huh? Would rather. Would rather. Would rather. Rather what? To be away from the body. What does it mean? Dead. Because when you're dead, you are at home with the Lord. And that is why, Cora, later on, our song, I just want to be where you are. <laughs> I don't know if you can still sing that. Knowing what it means when you say the words, I want to be where you are. Yeah. Dwelling daily in your presence. You know, that can only happen if you are dead. <laughs> Philippians. Again, Paul. For to me. What does it mean? I don't know about you, but for me, to live is Christ. That means it's work. And to die is what's gain? Advantageous. Promotion. You see, no more problem, no more utang. No more utang. You pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> but, but this is something that's very important. The view of scriptures of death is not something that you run away from. Jesus actually, in his case, he actually knows that he will be crucified. And yet he says, let's go. Now for you and I, we don't even know. Sometimes our presumption is that we will be put to death. But in that way, we are not going to be put to death. Because the disciples, as you will see later on, they said, if we go with you, we're going to die. But we know that the disciples, most of them died about 50, 70, and 80 years later. This is our presumption is always negative. If we go there, we die. <clears throat> That's not true. Then he says 22. Look at the attitude of Paul. If, I'm go, if I am to go on living in this body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Trabajo. Trabajo. Then he says, he puts his hands in his head. Yet what <laughs> shall I choose? I do not know. <laughs> the next verse. I am torn between two. I want to be with the Lord, which is far better. But you need me. Then he says, I, ako lang, ako lang, I, what's desire? Gusto. Gusto. I want to. I desire to depart, that's another way of saying to die, and be with Christ, which is better, better, better by, far. by far. That means a great distance. Yeah. Better, better by far. Then he says, but because of you, it is more necessary that I remain in the body. Because you're not growing up yet. <laughs> but Paul's saying, if I am the only one and I don't consider you, vamos a ir. I'm out of here. Luke 12. This is what Danny quoted earlier. Luke 12. And he told them this parable. Jesus tell, told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Well, what a big problem, huh? Oh. His business is growing. Uh, he just retired, Mobita. He just retired and said, oh, well, all of this thing, what, what am I going to do? He did a bigger part. Then he said, ah, here's an idea. This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And then it's the conclusion. And I'll say to myself in a duyan, Okay, with my mango shake, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, drink, and be merry. Mm. Then, but God said to him two words You fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then here's the chance. Then who will get what have uh, what you have prepared for yourself? Hmm. Your children are waiting. <laughs> They're fighting. You see, 
this parable, when Jesus was giving this, he was speaking to his disciples and the crowd that you are focusing on the wrong things in life. This is exactly the same thing as John chapter 8. Why do you search and look for bread that perishes? Focus on things, the bread that is of value for eternity. By the way, in these lines, it also goes into the parable of investing in the kingdom of God, where no thief and no, no, what's that, moth can uh, steal. Ah, I know many of you have your 401ks and say, wow. By the way, it's been dropping the past four months. It has dropped 20%. Okay. So, but the point is this. Well, how's your investment in the kingdom of God? Okay. First okay. Corinthians 15, 19. Listen to this, very important. If only for this life we have hope in Christ. That means you become religious, you become faithful because God will bless me. If it's only for this life that you are becoming faithful, religious, and everything, look, we are of all people most to be. <laughs> hmm. Hebrews, I love this one. Abraham was the richest man in the world at this time. He owned thousands of cattle. He had plenty of slaves. So in his lifetime, he could be the one who can just say, oh, just sit down, watch my barn grow bigger and so on. But look at what is described of him in Hebrews 11. For he, that's Abraham, was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Wow. He's looking forward. Yeah. He's looking in heaven. He was not saying, wow, look at all my cattle and look at all my goats and all my servants. The view of God towards the death of Christians. Precious. What's the word precious? Valuable. Huh? Valuable. Valuable. Important. Desirable, precious in the sight of the Lord. What is that? Ay, ay, ay. All these faithful servants. You see, not only should we be longing to be with the Lord, the Lord has been longing to be with you. But what would he say, Lord? Give me longer life. 50 more years, 100 more years. Heaven can wait. Heaven can wait, Lord. <laughs> somebody, uh, the pastor was preaching about uh, the rapture. So the, after the, the pastor was preaching rapture, very powerful. Then after the service, uh, one of the uh, couple, young men, uh, uh, Pastor, can, can the rapture be delayed? I'm, I'm about to get married next week. <laughs> <laughs> We thought we have a different view. Not a different view. Longing. Words, yes. I know that Paul preferred a longer life only to serve God. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's why he said, if you are not here, I'm out of here. Yeah. But for your good, it's better for me to stay. Yeah. But if he would not consider the people, said, there's nothing else to live for. There's nothing else to live for in this world. Once again, there's a time to be born and a time to die. That is what Jesus was saying when he said this parable in verse 9 and 10. That there's a time for the sunrise and a time for the sunset. All of us are done with our sunrise. We are all approaching our sunsets. Okay? And there's nothing you can do about that. Can anyone please stop the sun from, uh, from setting down? No. When it's time to set, it's going to set. No matter what vitamins you take or what exercise you do, if you jump from here to, you know, doesn't matter. God let the, God let the sun stood still. <laughs> For about an hour. Right? Okay, let's move on. Now, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, that is the disciples and the messenger, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Now, here's another idea. Uh, not, not idea. Um, another clue. 
that Lazarus is the friend of all the disciples. For some reason, they know Lazarus, our friend Lazarus. So again, we can speculate that they have spent plenty of time. Maybe, maybe they have a Bible study like this in the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. I think Lazarus fed them a lot. I'm sorry? <laughs> fed them a lot. Could be. No. Yeah. Again, that is speculation. But the point is, every single one of them know Lazarus and the family. Then Jesus said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Now, in text, in, the, in scriptures, almost always, the reference to physical death is sleeping. Okay? Mobita here has uh, two grandchildren. Yeah. They always sleep. Mobita, when they sleep, are you worried? Actually, you're happy. Finally, they're quiet. Right? <laughs> you don't worry. When, you know, when children sleep, Jesus, the disciples, always refer to physical death as sleeping. Even to the unbelievers. Yeah. Then he says, our friend Lazarus was, has, has fallen asleep, but I am going there to Bethany 1 in Judea to wake him up. Now, this is like a problem for the disciples. Lord, oh, where are we going to, to, to Judea? People want to kill you, and if they kill you, they'll kill us. And that's why they're reasoning. They went to use the words of Jesus because he is going, because his friend Lazarus is asleep, and he's going to wake, them, wake him up. Then the reasoning of the disciples. To try to convince him not to go. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. <laughs> I mean, Lord, isn't this good that he is sleeping because he is sick? Then if he's, if he's sleeping, then it will, it will rejuvenate him. Don't bother to go there. It's dangerous there. That's their last foray. Okay? Lord, master, tulog lang siya. He's taking a rest. Then Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. By the way, this is also, I'll just say this, that um, when you have, uh, you know, uh, when, when there's fear in doing the work of God, ministry, it dilutes our vision. It dilutes our vision of doing the will of God because there's fear. There's fear. So that's why even, I mean, the, the whole point is about death. And then now their translation is, oh, he's just literally sleeping. No, Jesus was speaking about death. So what did Jesus say? So then he told them play, plainly, disciples, my followers, Lazarus is D-E-A-D, -E -D, dead. Now this is a beauty. This is a beauty. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there. Now, later on, we will find out that by the time they went to uh, Lazarus, it has been four days since they first heard the message. Four days. Now, there are two other resurrections in the Bible. Two other resurrections. But both of those resurrections was immediate resurrection. In other words, the child died, the, the, the daughter of uh, Jairus, was it? The daughter of Jairus. As soon as she died, then... She was resurrected. And then another guy died and was resurrected. The difference with Lazarus, four days. And remember, Jewish practice, no embalming. Unlike the Egyptian, they'll put oil in the mummification to preserve it for centuries. Jewish practice, as soon as you die, within 24 hours, you are put in your, uh, uh, you know, typically in a cave. Okay? In a cave. So, but Jesus says, for your sake, I am glad. You know what glad is? Happy. I am happy that Lazarus is dead for four days. For your sake. Huh? What does it mean? Why is the Lord happy that the death of Lazarus is truly dead for the sake of the disciples? Why? So, so that you may, you may believe. Now, question. Aren't there believers already? They are believers. So what does it mean by so, so that they may believe? Because number one is increase their belief. Another one is that there are many different aspects or departments of belief. 
in this case, somehow they do not believe or they have doubts that if a person dies, that is it. That's the practice, of, by the way, of the Sadducees. The Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection, that your life here on earth is it. That's it. But here's a, so that you may believe that you may have a deeper belief because later on he will say, but I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 1, John the Apostle said that the word is the light and the giver of life. You see, it's easy to say amen to those things. You know, we have life in Jesus. He will resurrect. It's easy. But somehow when people die, we, we forget that theology. We forget that doctrine. But that you may believe. You may believe. And part of the you may believe is this. There is no fear, or should I say, there will be less fear of death. Practically speaking, and my mom can attest to this, I always say, I want to go ahead. Bye bye. Okay? Yeah, because to live is gain, it's far better. Then you, you must but for your sake, <laughs> because you're so hard headed, I must still stay. Then the, then the Lord says to his disciples, but let's go to him. Let's go to him. I know you're fearful, but I want you to see that even though it's been four days that Lazarus is dead, you will experience, you will see with your own eye that he'll be resurrected from the dead. And when you see him, you will have a deeper belief in me. But let's go. Now, were the disciples ready to go? No, except one. His name is Thomas. Thomas. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, which is, means Kambal, twin. So Thomas, Didymus, is also known to be doubting Thomas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But there's one thing about Thomas that perhaps is your first time to understand. Maybe. He is the most valiant and courageous among the disciples. Maybe. Everybody was trying to hide, but Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Wow. So, that is introduction to John Gospel in chapter 11 on the resurrection of Lazarus. There you go. Any thoughts? Question? Comment? I have two questions. So, yeah. you said that <clears throat> an appointment for us to die right mm -hmm. because i've met some extreme christian that they don't believe going to the doctor because they mm -hmm. say, if i'll die i die mm -hmm. and my second question is um, well, what's the question there what's, what's the uh, question on the first one if no, they die they die if they die they die but then uh because there's a, there's an appointed time for us to die. Okay, right? so they won't so, bother going to the doctor. So they don't bother. To so your question is, doctor. is it okay to think that way? Yeah. Because, okay. You know, All right. From a medical point of view, okay. you know, I struggle sometimes if you counsel them. Uh -huh. You know, you give them patient education. They say, Correct. Oh, you know, I'm diabetic. You mm -hmm. know, I'll just die if I yeah. my blood sugar is gonna hike. You know, to okay. bit. That's the end of my life. Uh huh. But then, how do, how you do we? Okay. In? So that's the first one. What's the second one? About the decay, uh, you know, about the cremation. Ah, okay. I was asked that two days ago. So first answer. There is what you call always the human responsibility. Um, the past couple of weeks, we have been discussing about the election of God and the free will of man. In other words, there is man's responsibility. So in other words, even though you're elected, you are also responsible for your actions. So in other words, not because God have appointed a certain time, a certain date, a second set, a certain second that when I will die, I'll die. It doesn't mean that I'll be responsible of my health. You are still responsible as well. Does that make sense? Again, you, this is hard to explain because these are putting two seemingly contradicting doctrines. One is God has appointed time for you. But secondly, you are also responsible for your life. The same thing as God has elected for those who belong to him in salvation. But then you are also obligated to make a choice to believe in him or not. So again, these are two seemingly um, contradicting. But the thing is, we find both in scriptures. An example of taking care of your health. Uh, 
not really, not a great emphasis, but Paul in Timothy, for exercise is of little value. But he still says there's, there's value in exercise. Okay, that's one. The other one is, um, uh, what do you call this? When, when, when Timothy was having stomach ache, Paul actually advised him to take some uh, wine to take care of his uh, stomach. So in other words, what you can do to remedy your problem, go ahead. Okay. Another one would be, um, I was thinking of something else. Um, oh, I forgot. Okay, I forgot. For example, uh, as far as avoiding death, when Jesus was about to stone to death, he has said, okay, anyway, if I am not appointed to die today, then go ahead and stone me and that's okay. No, the Bible tells us that he actually escaped. So he was avoiding death. You see that that's the human side. But as far as God's point, God's point of view, you have an exact time. Second, cremation. There is no explicit verse that say it is sin or not sin. There's no explicit. The closest that we can get is that uh, in the book of Exodus, I believe. No, no, Genesis. From thus to thus, you return. Now, when you bury a person, I don't know how long. How long does it take for a body to decay? Ten years. Ten years? I don't know, okay? but it will turn to dust in the end. Cremation is simply speeding up the process. Okay, so now, unless there is a better answer than, than that, I have no better answer than that. Yes. I would say to the patient, would you rather not die yet because it's not your time, but live without arms or blind or all these you know, complications of your diseases? You may not die yet because it's not your time. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's not your time, it's not your time. But I would just say, that's why I say the key for every believer is to maximize your earthly life. Which means even if you're in the hospital, when people visit you, instead of them encouraging you, you encourage them. Yes. Yeah, some Christians believe that if you cremate, get cremated, you seem to be making it harder for God to resurrect you. What what if you're in, you know, in Iraq or in Afghanistan and your, your body was blown up? So. Uh, never, uh, if you're looking forward to your resurrection, mm -hmm. uh, make it easier, easier for God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The hardest question that I've heard is very similar, but his question is this. So he said, in rapture, we will be taken out, right? In a twinkling of an eye. But then he said, will your dress still follow? <laughs> of course not, right? The, only the body. Yeah. But then he said, okay, if the dress will stay and your body is taken out, what if in your lifetime you donated your kidney or your heart to somebody else? Okay, let's say your heart. When you died, you gave your heart to somebody else. So when you are raptured, will your heart that has been given also be raptured? <laughs> Okay. Again, these are just crazy questions, but the point is this. Let me show you a very beautiful verse because there are many questions, frankly, could not be answered. And I will want to bring you to uh, Deuteronomy, and many of you should memorize this. Deuteronomy 29. Okay, hold on. Let me see here. Uh, 29, hold on, let me ipagkash ako lang sa screen ko. 29. Uh, 29, verse 29. Okay, take note of this. Write down somewhere in your notes. And here's what it says. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever. That we may follow all the words of this law. In other words, you and I can only understand things that the Lord has revealed. What the Lord has not revealed is all speculation. Mm -hmm. Okay. 29-29. Deuteronomy. All right. Anybody else? Any more thoughts? Yes, Nitz. So this morning when he was in our way to going to church all of a sudden, that came into my mind and I told him, okay, you need to be ready because we are going down the hill. <coughs> I said, okay, that's uh, 
talk about if we are going to be committed or not and where we are going. So, uh -huh. Okay, he said, okay, let's look for our will. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's our plan. Uh, yeah. I mean, remember a whole multi-billion industry was created because of the sureness of death. Mm -hmm. What industry is that? Insurance. Insurance. They are more looking forward to death than many Christians. But some people don't really say, uh, you know, at least here is about death. And they say, oh, don't talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Many people try to not to talk about it. Yeah. But the Bible speaks about death all over. Expect death and that Christ came to save us from death. So how can you escape talking about death when the whole purpose of his coming is to save us from death? There's no going around it. That's the main purpose of Christianity. It's not to have a better life, more comfortable life. That's not the point. In this world, you will have trouble. But when you die or when the Lord returns, there will be no more tears and no more pain. That's why it's far better. I don't know. If, 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 yeah. if what? If, if you really, if, if, right. if you're a believer, that's right. If you're a believer, of course, it's only applicable to the belief. That's why he was talking to his disciples. And the disciples were fearful. Huh? We're going to Jerusalem. People want to kill us there. Why, why, why are you going back there? Any more thoughts? Comment? Yes. I think the, the advantage of being a Christian is uh, when you die, immediately you're in the presence of God consciously. Correct. 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 The unbeliever sleeps totally. Correct. Body and. Well, uh, if we take a look at the uh, parable or the actual story of Lazarus, not this Lazarus, the Lazarus and the rich man, yeah, that true. when they died, one went to Abraham's bosom and the other one went to Hades, mm -hmm. to hell. So already we see that even though their bodies were somewhere on earth buried, mm -hmm. Lazarus was with Abraham very much alive. And uh, the rich man who was in Hades or in hell was also very much alive. So he had consciousness? He has consciousness. The one that is asleep is our body, mm -hmm. which will be resurrected. But, uh, I thought the judgment was at the end. That's why the I judgment, there are seven <laughs> judgments. There is the first judgment of you being a believer right now. There's a judgment already, whether you're in Christ or you're not. The second judgment is what you call the Bima Sit or the, the Bima judgment of Christ. That is when the Lord returns and you are you and I as Christians are judged according to what we have done as Christians. That's the second one. The third judgment is a total separation of the ghosts in the ship where the ghosts will be uh, thrown totally in hell forever. That's the, the future, right? That's future. That's called the Great White Throne Judgment. But how can the Lazarus story? Because they are in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, okay, we're going deep. They are in the Old Testament. When a person dies, he does not go to the to be with the Lord. Why? Because the Lord has not died to pay the penalty of sin yet. So they go to what we call now Abraham's bosom. And at that point in time, people in hell in Hades can actually have a communication with Abraham. Remember, uh, the rich man said, Father Abraham, can you ask Lazarus to dip his finger? In they have a communication. Mm -hmm. But then when Christ died and paid the penalty of sin, the symbolism that now we have access to God directly is that the curtain yeah. of the, uh, what do you call this, the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom, showing that we can now have access because of the payment of sin. Okay. Mm. Uh, the other answer to that is it's a parable. Yes. So they're saying if it's a parable, it didn't actually happen or it was a. Could be, but uh, the Lord's, it is the only parable that Jesus, again, uh, even most of it is debatable. Okay? It, they say, some will say it's not a parable because there's an actual name, Lazarus. All the other parables have no actual name. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one argument. But even if it's a, 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 what you call it, a parable, the parable still speaks about a, a person who is with Abraham mm -hmm. and another person who is in Hades. By the way, the word hell are two words, Hades and Gehenna. Hades is where that man was, the, the rich man. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But in, in the book of Revelation, after the great white throne, Hades, hell, will be thrown to Gehenna, hell. But Gehenna is called the lake of fire. Okay. So it's like if in uh, right, if we are to compare it now, uh, you if you get if you have a crime, you're put in jail, okay, temporarily. Mm -hmm. But if you know the final, you know the judge says guilty, then you are put in prison. Same picture. So Hades is like a temporary holding that you are, you know, probably guilty. Then the last judgment, great white throne, everybody will be thrown into the lake of fire. Mm, we're going eschatology now. Okay. Hades is a little lighter fire. Huh? So Hades is a little bit less fire. Again, uh, the, the thing is about Hades, as far as the parable is concerned, that rich man was still able to communicate. He has time to argue. Abraham, Abraham, is hot here, but can you please send us water in the lake of fire? You don't have time for that. Okay. It's, it says a total torment. Mm -hmm. I have a question. A little bit uh, yeah. Why is he using parables all the time? Why is he using parable to what? Jesus when he's teaching. Why does he? Ask? Ah, very good question. Why did Jesus use parable? He he himself said it, but I cannot pinpoint the verse today. But he himself says so that people will not understand. Why? Yeah, you know why? Because only those who are serious will understand. For example, yeah. the parable of the sower. In the parable of the sower, what was the teaching? Oh, there was this farmer. He went to throw his seed. Some fell on good soil, bad soil, rocky soil, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And then what did happen? After that, people went home. So when the people went home, guess what? They were talking. What did, you, what did Jesus talk about? Oh, he talked about good farming. But the disciples, it said, went to Jesus and say, Lord, what were you talking about? And to them, the Lord explained. They were serious. They were serious. If you just go to church, for example, what do you learn? Ah, oh, you know, the pastor said about this joke. Yeah. And that's it. But only those who are serious, who check the scriptures and see if what Paul said is true, are of more noble character. Right? There was an instance when John the Baptist got mad at the Pharisees uh -huh. because they kept coming. And he was afraid that they're gonna get saved. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, or would repent. That's the point. Repent. Yeah. 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 So there's such a thing. That's what. You're so it's saying. like Jonah. He did not want the Nineveh to be saved. Yeah, he did not want Nineveh. Yeah. yeah. You see, because a typical Jew. By the way, Nineveh is a gentle country. Okay. Nineveh is a gentle country. A typical Jew does not want anything to do with the Gentiles. More so do they want the Gentiles to be saved. Because they think that salvation is exclusive for the Jews. The chosen. But it was their job to convert people. It was their job to convert people. Yeah. By the way, don't pinpoint... Don't pinpoint don't pinpoint fingers on uh what's his name jonah. jonah you know why because sometimes you and i are also very much like jonah yeah. we see a person with lots of tattoos mm -hmm. okay and hair like a chicken you say I don't know, that one we already make a presumption that he doesn't deserve heaven who says so christ died for the world it doesn't matter whether you have tattoo or no tattoo no hair <laughs> or plenty of hair. Doesn't matter. <laughs> right, Bert? Say amen. <laughs> uh, anybody on the on the online? Bibs? Loy? Dan? Fred? Bang? Yeah. Yes. Chapter 9. I know. In verse 9 and 10. Verse 9? Yeah, verse 9 and 10. Okay. Are there not 12 hours in a day? What about verse 9 and 10? I don't know if I'm right, uh, what I've read. Uh, the meaning of days here is, the meaning of days, uh, 
the knowledge of God's will and night the absence of God's will. Ang mahirap maintindihan yung audio. Nine and ten, nine and ten. What, what, what about nine and ten? What about it? The, the meaning of uh, the meaning of day here is the knowledge of God's will, and night is the absence of God's will. So, so what's the question? What, what's the what's the question though? Yeah, night and day. What about it? Uh, nine and ten. What's the, no, the interpretation? Nga, the interpretation, as I mentioned, is that the Lord was speaking because the, the verse before, the disciples were afraid of going to Jerusalem because they would be killed. And then Jesus answered. So directly to the situation that they were afraid to die. Then he speaks about this parable that there are 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. So the interpretation to that is that Jesus was saying there is a time for the sun to rise and for the sun to set, which in reference to life, there is a time to be born and a time to die. It is what it is. I think yeah, what, what, what Norma is saying something. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I think there's a verse in the Bible that says uh, we must work while it's day. Exactly. We must work while it is day because the time will come you can no longer work. Because you're up, maybe you're in coma or something, or you're totally dead. Or it's no longer a saving time. Yeah. Dan, anything on your side, Dan? Mike. Yeah. Uh, comment, Dan. Mm. Uh, that's why while we are still alive, we are being given the chance by God to share the gospel. Otherwise, yeah. we forfeit our the opportunity of earning rewards in uh, during the Bima Seat uh, awarding. Exactly. So that's the reason why we are still around. Otherwise, uh, God could have taken us out. But, uh, we exactly. missed the opportunity of sharing to more people. Exactly. And I have learned this also. My uh, comment is uh, God can even take us out in the middle of our good plans. So we cannot control. I love that. Say, say it again, Dan. Say it again. God can, God can take us out in the middle of our good plans. Uh, uh -huh. for ministry for uh, other good things that we plan to do. That's why we have to be always ready to, to go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. God can take you out at the middle of your good plan. I think there were some pastors of some good churches that died during this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Pastors in good churches, you know. Yeah. Uh, these churches are productive. Yeah. And yet the Lord took them. Yeah. Yep. You know, how do you explain that? How do you explain that? Because any good plan of God is not dependent on any person. He can take out Moses and the plan to take out the Israelites from Egypt will still be pursued even without Moses. If Mary said, uh, if Angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Mary, you will be the mother of the Emmanuel. And Mary said, no way. <laughs> Even if Mary said, no, maybe a Rebecca or a Roberta or a... Yeah, because sometimes we think that it's all dependent on a person. That's not true. That's not true. Huh? You can never know. I mean, God can even use uh, a donkey, remember? God used a donkey. That's why. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, we're talking about conversion and everything. And by the way, we think that God only uses true believers. No. He uses unbelievers to teach the believers. It's all over scriptures. Or even a donkey. Or even a donkey. Or even your president. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Philippines, you have Philippines, you have a new president now. BBM. BBM. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more? Vivian? Ben? Anything in your side, Lloyd? Bibs? Bibs, magpakita ka, Bibs. Nakakaya po eh. Magang maga yung mata ko. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, she had surgery this week. She had surgery. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Hello po. Yes, Bib. Any, any, any thoughts, comments, or question? Thank you so much po for the, ano, 
sa itinuro nyo po sa amin. We've learned a lot, pero kailangan pa rin makinig pa more. Kaalis lang po ni Nelson. Nakinig din po siya. Yeah. Uh, he went But, to work. So like what Jesus said to his disciples, I'm glad that this happened so that you might believe. See? Amen. So God permits the things that's happening in your life and in each one of us so that we might believe in Christ more. Dan, what's your favorite verse, mo Dan? So I can show it to them. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 4.16-18. 1 Corinthians what? 4.16-18. Okay. Four, six, eight, 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 eight. So, that, so that people can see here. Everybody, this is a very beautiful verse. Okay? 1 Corinthians 14. Look at this verse. Ito ang live, live verse ni ano. 2 Corinthians 4.16-18. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4. Hold on. 2 Corinthians 4. No, that's Philippians. Okay, uh, everybody, take a look at this verse. You might want to keep this very close to your heart. Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 16. Okay, Dan, here you go, Dan. Okay, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, and yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs the, the, them all. So we fix our eyes on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. There you go. That's my favorite verse for senior citizens. For senior citizens. Did <laughs> Though outwardly, we are wasting away. In other words, nabubulok na tayo. Yes, inwardly. Yeah. You know, that's scientific. Yeah. Our body is being renewed daily. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. No, but this one is the inwardly. Our, our spirits are being renewed day by day. But our external, our external is deteriorating. Okay? That's why for you ladies, The older you get, the more expensive your budget may be for makeups, no? <laughs> you need you need thicker. <laughs> Norma said. <laughs> botox, botox. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we better come to a close. But here's the whole point. The whole point is this: death for every one of us is just around the corner. You can never know in the midst of your plans, even ministry plans, God can snap it away any moment. Now, of course, we will still grieve when one of our loved ones dies, but not as the world grieves who have no hope. Because we know that we who are in Christ will be resurrected like him. And in our next verses, the initial view of the disciples that Lazarus was four days old and yet four, resurrected. Four days, four days dead. Old. No. Oh, sorry, four days old. Four days old dead. Okay. Four days old dead. You know, if I'll be graphic about it, binubulati na siya. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. This is not in the Bible. What is that in the Bible? How many years uh, Lazarus lived after his death? Doesn't say. Yeah. But, but but here but here's the point. The point is the example here. Lazarus was resurrected in this physical life, and yet physical life you will still die. Yeah. But the day will come when you and I are physically resurrected, those who are in Christ, and will never die. And this will build up to John chapter 15 that those who believe in Him, though they die, will live. <laughs> There's supposed to be a tomb for Lazarus in that place. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Even in Israel right now, there is what you call the Lazarus, uh, Lazarus tomb. And the town was named after him. Hmm? The, oh, really? town. The, the town was named under him. Yeah, correct. Uh -huh. You want to change San Marcos to Justin? When Paul was in the middle of a shipwreck, he uh -huh. said, don't worry, guys. Yeah. I am here. Exactly. That means this, everybody will be saved. Correct. Meaning, uh, 
uh, there's an advantage of being around with Christians. Yeah. In, in some ways. Yeah. No, again, you know, here's what we need to understand. I cannot just say, do not be fearful of death. Even though if I say that, it, it doesn't matter. Because there's another doctrine that you truly has, have to truly believe for you not to be fearful of death. And that is the doctrine of the assurance of salvation. If you are not sure of your salvation, it is just but right that you should be fearful of death. Yeah. Okay. Mami? Yes. Overtime na kayo masyado. <laughs> Mayroon pang <laughs> issue si Lord sa akin. Uh, Ingit ba kayo? Ingit. <laughs> Ako hindi. <laughs> anyway, I'm not scared of that because I surrendered already my life to God. No matter what happens, I say when I die, I'll be with you right away. Because I'm saved. Okay. Amen. We better close. And our lesson is really up to you whether it becomes real or not. Lesson is just a lesson. But it is up to you whether you will believe. Okay. It's individual. It's your choice. Jeff? Okay? Yes. Uh, you just been attending with us, what? Three times? Four times now? This is serious, Jer. Okay, Bible study is more than just fellowship. It's about the assurance of salvation. Yes. Knowing that because every single person will die, Everyone, yeah. so hopefully, hopefully, that's why Paul said, check and see if yeah. you are truly in the faith. Mm -hmm. Let's close. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. Indeed, your word is truth. And Lord, nothing else, yung mga kasabihan ng mga tao, what we want to feel, we want to avoid death, we want to pray for longer life. In the end, we are all appointed to die once. Mm -hmm. We ask that whatever life we have left here on earth, that it would be invested in the kingdom of God. Because truly, like you said, Jesus said, Lord Jesus, you said, I'm coming back soon. And with me are my rewards. Lord, I'm just so excited uh, of those things that you will be rewarding each one of us according to what we have done while in this body. So we commit to you, Lord, our life. I uh, alam kung how much longer we have. But we ask Lord, that you give us opportunities to be able to serve you in different areas uh, of being a blessing to other people. So we thank and we praise you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.